On today's video, we're going to be talking about brand sponsorship. But before diving into this, I want to remind you that being an influencer is okay. There is negative connotation about the word influencer. Maybe a few years ago, all we saw were self-absorbed influencers trying to show the perfect lives, but it is no longer like this. Whether you are a coach, a business owner, self-service provider, anyone trying to build an online presence using social media is an influencer. And that's okay. Influencer equals entrepreneur. Let's eliminate that negative connotation around the word influencer and let's keep going. In 2023, we're living in the personal brand era and brands know this. Brands know that if they want to get their message out there to the right people, they need to do it through personal brands, through influencers. So they're dedicating a very high amount of their marketing budget to influencer marketing because it has been proven that it is more efficient than traditional marketing. More more efficient than traditional media where you put an advertisement in a billboard or a magazine or a TV because that is not personal. People are tired of seeing these inorganic campaigns from brands. They have realized that as humans, we are attracted to other humans. And what a better way to deliver your message than through another human, right? So you're going to see that this year, more and more creators, entrepreneurs, small business owners that have an online presence will start promoting other brands. You basically become an ad advertiser for the brand. And why is this so important? Well, think about the way brands used to produce campaigns in the past. They would have to get in touch with the production company so that they would help them create the content, whether it was video content or just photos or anything. They would need to hire someone else externally. Then they would need to hire a PR agency that would help them get the campaign out, whether it was through traditional media like billboards, magazines, etc., or through public figures like actors, actresses, models, etc. So that was a lot of money that were allocated to these campaigns. Nowadays, content creators can do the entire job themselves. We create the content and then we promote that content to our audiences, generating benefits for the brand, whether it is revenue, clicks, or just brand awareness. And let me tell you, my friend, brand sponsorships can be a huge asset of your online business. They can actually generate consistent revenue for your business, which is great because when you're getting started and you're trying to find like the perfect balance, this comes in very, very handy. Now let's look at how how can you navigate brand sponsorships? Because if it's your first time, my first time negotiating with brands was terrible and I should have charged way more than what I actually charge. So I don't want you to go through the same. It'll start with the base fee. And this is probably what you will find everywhere online. 1% of your follower base, which is to be honest, bullshit. <laughs> this is nothing, which means that if you have 10,000 followers, which you've worked extremely hard for, and they are very, very, very engaged, a very engaged community, you're only gonna be getting $100 for a post. No, 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 that's wrong. Okay. The base fee can be calculated based on your engagement rate. I would recommend you to start from 2% and some people can charge up to 5% of their following base. And this would be calculated based on their engagement rate. Let's look at an engagement rate chart. Accounts that have less than 1,000 followers and average engagement rate is 8%. For account between 1,000 and 5,000 followers, it would be 7%. For account between 5,000 and 10,000 followers, 4%. For accounts between 10, and to 100,000 followers, 2.4%. And for accounts that are bigger than 100,000 followers, 1.7%. So let's pretend that you have 20,000 followers and your engagement rate is off the charts. You have an engagement rate of 8%, which is higher than average. You can actually charge as your base fee 5% of your followers, which would mean that you can get $1,000 for one Instagram post with 20,000 followers. The huge mistake most content creators or smaller influencers do is that they stay here. They just charge base rate and that's it. But there are so many other things that you can charge for. And many times brands add these things as clauses in the contract. But if you don't know what they're for, then you can't charge for them. So let's go over them. The first thing that you can charge extra for is exclusivity. Most of the times the brand you work with will ask you to be exclusive to them for the period of the campaign, which makes total sense. Some of them will ask you to be exclusive for a specific amount of time after the campaign has ended. And this is where you have to be really careful because if a brand asks you to be exclusive for the next six months, you might be losing money throughout these six months because you're not going to be able to partner with another brand. And if you're a creator whose niche is very limited, let's say that you're a beauty creator and you usually work with makeup brands. Well, if you cannot promote another makeup brand, then you're going to be screwed for the next six months. However, if you know this, you can earn good money. So 
the rule is that for every month of exclusivity that the brand asks for after the campaign has ended, they have to pay you your base fee. Let's go back to a previous example. You are getting $1,000 for an Instagram post. The brand asks you to be exclusive for this next six months. So they will have to pay you an extra $6,000. The next thing you can charge for is content usage and image rights. And this one is huge as well. And I would say that 90% of creators or influencers don't know about it. So typically when you work with a brand, they want you to create the content and post it in your own channels to promote the product or service to your audience, right? However, in many cases, brands also want this content in their own channels, in their social media, on their website, on their blogs, on their email newsletter, etc. And believe it or not, they should compensate you for this as well, for the content that they will be using that you created because you own the rights of this content. Normally, they should pay 30% of the sponsored post rate for the amount of time that they will be using this piece of content or these pieces of content in their own channels. So let's go back to a previous example where your base rate is $1,000 per post with 20,000 followers, right? They will be using your content in their marketing channels for the next six months. So 1,000 times 30% times six equals $900, 900 extra dollars that they should be paying you for the entire campaign. If your photographer image licensing can vary according to your gear, to the years of experience, etc. My friend Chastity from Through the Lens has a great blog post and rate calculator where you can calculate your fees as a photographer and I'm linking it in the description. The next thing that you should be charging for is white listing. You've probably heard about white listing many times, but you're still not sure what it is. It basically means that you give permission to the brand to boost or promote your posts as ads on your behalf. This means that your audience or people that they're targeting will see your post as an ad coming from your account. This benefits the brand a lot, not only because they have more control over the audiences they target, but it's another way of humanizing their brand even more. Who would you rather see ads from? Just a brand or from an actual person that you like and trust? Easy, right? So let's take your base fee, which is $1,000 times 0.3 times six, which is $1,800. 1800 extra dollars they should be paying you for the entire campaign. The industry standard for white listing is the same as the content usage. 30% of the sponsored post rate for the amount of time that the campaign will last. However, some influencers also charge an extra 4 to 5% of the total ad spend that the brand will be investing on this specific campaign. Let's go back to our previous example where you're charging $1,000 for one post. 1,000 times 30% times six, we saw previously that it was $1,800 extra. You're still going to charge this, but on top of this, you're going to ask the brand how much are they spending or they're intending to spend on this campaign. Let's say that the brand says, well, we're going to invest, we're going to put $2,000 into this ads campaign. You can charge four to 5% of that total ad spend and add it to your total fee, which means you're charging 5%. So it's 2000 times 5%, which is $100. I know that $100 <laughs> might not sound like a lot, but the brand might be spending more than $2,000, right? If you keep adding all these things, you will increase your overall fee exponentially. Now, up to here, I've been talking mostly about the posts, which include singles, carousels, and reels. Now let's talk about other deliverables you can include in the campaign. Let's start with Instagram stories. For stories, you can typically charge between five to 10% of your impressions, of your average impressions. Let's say that your average impressions are 1,000 story views, and you could charge between 50 dollars for one story up to a hundred if let's say that the brand wants to include a link to direct traffic to their website if they want a link you can charge more the link in bio this one is a great one and again not so many people charge for this when a brand asks you to put their link in your bio you're basically acting as a direct traffic source to their website as a business owner entrepreneur you can be losing traffic to your own channels and you could be losing sales of your own products and your own services so of course you need to charge for that as well. There are no rules for how much you can charge for a link in bio. However, let's think as advertisers. The cost per click on Instagram, which means that the average amount that people
people that do ads spend is between 40 to 70 cents per click. Okay, let's take the total number of website clicks you have per month and you're going to multiply that times 40 or 70 cents and that's going to be your value for the entire campaign. It really depends if they ask you to have the link in value for an entire month or just for one week or just for a few days, but you should still be charging for that. Last week, I got 651 website clicks. So let's take this as an example and multiply it by 40 cents, which would be $260 per week. So this is what I would ask the brand in exchange for placing their link in my bio. And last but not least, offer packages. If a brand gets in touch with you and they're asking for one post, get back to them and offer them multiple packages. I usually offer three different packages, a small tier, mid tier and higher tier, where I include different deliverables. Remember, you are a creator, you're an entrepreneur, you probably have multiple skills besides just creating a post on Instagram or on social media in general. You probably know how to write a good blog post. You probably also have presence on another social media like TikTok or YouTube. You probably even have an email newsletter that you can use to leverage this campaign, right? So why not adding all of these deliverables into packages and make sure that these packages talk about a longer partnership. You don't want to work with a brand and just produce one post or one month of campaign because we all know that in order for a marketing message to really go through and touch people, people need to see this message at least six times. There's six different touch points throughout the entire journey. Make sure that you are including these six different touch points. I always suggest starting with a three month proposal. Each package that you will be sending is going to be based on a three month partnership with different deliverables. If you do good work, the brand will be more than happy to extend this to six months or even a year brand partnership, which as I said at the beginning, it's a great way of having consistent recurring income. So that's it, my friends. That's the ultimate guide for brand sponsorship whether you consider yourself an influencer or not, but you're still an influencer. This is going to help you leverage those brand partnerships, whether a brand is getting in touch with you or you're getting in touch with brands. Don't forget to keep in mind all the points we discussed today so that you can actually double or even triple your fee. This is how I turned a three figure brand partnership into a five figure brand partnership. So it works. If you learn something new, don't forget to like. And if you're new here, don't forget to subscribe for more social media tips for content creators and entrepreneurs and see you next time.